Hello there, kia ora. Look, the last few days have been pretty hectic for me as I run around Armageddon, uh, allowed me to pick up a new sword and a couple of other things that are hiding in the background. You might be able to spot a couple of them. Who knows? But I figured today's video, I'll do something relatively simple, a bit like shooting fish in a barrel, and I will look at some of the dumbest things that we saw happen in the world of politics over the last week. I hope it doesn't become a regular feature, but it might do depending on how often stupid things are said by stupid people. All right, let's kick into it. This week is School Pride Week, which is a completely voluntary initiative that some schools can choose to take part in if they want to. And even then, students who are in those schools that take part don't have to take part if they don't want to. It's an initiative that's designed to show young people who might be dealing with issues about coming out of the closet or understanding their gender identity, that there's support networks in place for them and to help them be more accepting in their own individual journey, because that can be absolutely harrowing for anybody. So of course, Brian Tamaki is jumping up and down about this, as he does every other year that this is on, because one, it's a great distraction from what's actually happening in the courts at the moment around his own youth pastor, but also because it's a really easy way to rile up his base. Very on brand at the moment for the person who knew about all the paintings of the rainbow crossings and still let it happen, and then turned around in court and said, who me? I don't know what's going on. What are you talking about? Oh, so silly weird little side fact for you, and I made a video about this last year, it's the one that got me the most death threats, so I'm sure this is going to go down really, really well. You see, Brian has decided that there should be rolling protests around the country this week. Each day, in a different region of the country, he's encouraging parents to take their kids out of school as a protest against telling rainbow youth that they should be accepted for who they are. Yeah. But there's some weird stuff that's going on in this, like he's telling students in Auckland they should take Saturday off from school. He's also organising a massive protest apparently down Queen Street, a straight pride parade. I'm sure that's going to go really, really well, like every other straight pride event. It's going to be filled with his man up crowd sitting there trying to intimidate people while everybody else just kind of sits there and laughs and giggles at the fact that you've got all these leather daddies walking up and down the street telling people that being gay is bad. It's typical Brian Tamaki stuff. It's no surprise to see that this is the kind of thing he is trying to make a noise about while ignoring the other things that everybody else is making noises about. This week also saw all three coalition partners take credit for finally getting rid of those terrible blanket speed reductions outside of schools, which is always kind of strange. I do find it weird that all three of them want to claim credit for it, like they know they've got a fan base that only listens to them and nobody else so they can get away with it, or nobody in ACT goes, hmm, I wonder what New Zealand First's contribution to this was. That doesn't really matter though. This was a really weird one though for ACT, because, well, David Seymour was particularly proud of this particular move. He described it as finally getting rid of Labour's blanket scattergun approach. It's not possible to be both a blanket approach and a scattergun approach. A blanket approach applies to everything, a scattergun approach only affects some things, but apparently this is what's going on. But what's even weirder was how he felt that this was going to bring joy to people's lives, because apparently slowing down slightly outside of schools sucks the joy from people's lives. Not quite as much as, you know, killing people or injuring them, which is what the research from Auckland Transport actually showed would happen with those reduced speed limits and actually ended up being the case. Reduced speed limits led to less injuries and less deaths. But hey, you get to go slightly faster in front of schools, woohoo, in a blanket scattergun way? I guess they've tried to fix a problem that wasn't really there. Don't panic if you thought New Zealand First wasn't going to be on this list. Of course they are. Have you seen their caucus? They were definitely going to be on the list of stupid things that happened during the week. They put this tweet out. It's still called a tweet. Uh, featuring Shane Jones talking about bringing back mining and oil and gas exploration and stopping woke by doing so. Which is quite clearly a dog whistle to their idiotic fan base who seems to think that woke is some kind of insult. But it also plays very much into their fan base who doesn't believe in things like climate change. Just a quick reminder for you, research done at Cornell University last year showed that of 88,125 peer-reviewed research pieces on climate change, 99.9% .9 of them all agreed climate change has been worsened by man-made actions like mining and gas and oil exploration. 
But don't worry, because it's not woke to have them there, so we're going to continue doing it. And his fan base will sit there drooling at the bit because he said things are anti-woke, so it's so cool. These people are in charge of the government. Oh. Right, finally, the education curriculum. It's actually been up for a little bit of a review and change since the new government got in. And over the last week, we've seen bits and pieces of the report come through of what the changes are looking like, particularly to the English curriculum. And there's some really weird stuff in here. Like the fact they want to bring back Chaucer or Beowulf or Shakespeare. Shakespeare never left the curriculum, but the other two did because they're like really weird stuff for students to be dealing with. But don't worry, Chantal Baker is all behind this because, you know, she's always the smartest person in the room by herself, claiming that this is clearly what education's always been aiming for, to make men dress up as women. God, she's an idiot. But on top of that, we also got news yesterday that there are some changes that they're looking at bringing in that revolve around the way that writing works, particularly around bringing back handwriting as a teaching tool. Now, there's actually some research behind this that states it's easier for people to learn how to read if they know how to write properly, because it's a way that our brain connects everything together. At the same time, well, they want to bring back cursive, which isn't actually great for a couple of reasons. For a start, people who are dealing with dyslexia have real problems with cursive writing because they can't make out individualized characters in there. At the same time, modern research actually shows that cursive is kind of detrimental because it's not a font or format that people are used to, particularly young learners. They're much more used to a simple text-based format that you might find on a website or in a book. You know, simple block-based printing. Something that sans serif without the little fiddly bits on the end. Much, much easier for people to learn than cursive. But, got to bring back something from the 1980s to make it feel like everything is being modernized. You see, the interesting part behind this is one of the individuals that's actually involved in this whole process is Dr. Elizabeth Rata. She has been, well very vocally anti-Māori for quite some time. She shows up on all your least favourite platforms like the NZCPR, the New Zealand Initiative, Reality Check Radio, always talking about how we really shouldn't be doing anything to help with Māori because what's the point? Despite the fact that last year's NCEA results, the highest results came from Te Reo Immersion classes. Weird how she could be so wrong and yet in charge of the education curriculum and already been shoulder tapped by David Seymour to help with setting up charter schools. So our education is quite clearly in hands. Right, that's the list for this week. But just a quick reminder for you, having a government that's in power at the time that gives some kind of authority to those people who might be race baiting or sexist or anti-rainbow community or even believe in conspiracy theories, it emboldens them. That's what the research shows us, that there is an emboldening of people who believe in those ideologies when a government doesn't push back on it or echoes them. And we see that a lot, which is one of the reasons why it's really important to point out sometimes the ludicrousness of what it is that we're seeing, because there is an element of ludicrousness in all of it. It's a great way of getting people worked up, snappy sound bites that get people foaming at the mouth a little bit because there's no critical thinking involved. There's no analysis going on. We just told things like not mining stuff is woke or, you know, it brings joy to be able to speed past schools. And those are patently stupid things to say. But people who want to believe it are going to believe it and they're going to push it out there. And people who don't want to believe it are going to rage farm and get the word out there at the same time. So it is important to point out when these stupid things that are being said are just stupid. So if you come across any over the next week or so, I'd love to hear what they are. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section or, you know, hide under the pillow, which is what my second option is going to be for this video this week. Hmm. All right, until next time, catch us later. Wait, you're still here? It's over. Go find another video.